light compounds are very, very stable. It is very difficult to get those to react. But we, there are a few reactions that we can make an aromatic ring undergo. The first reaction that we're going to look at is called an electrophilic aromatic substitution. I'm going to go generic here to start with and then we'll go through specific examples. We are going to take an aromatic ring and we're going to react that with some electrophile. And I'm going to put an E there for my electrophile. It would have something out there to balance charge out, so now I'll put an A for like an anion that's out there. Uh, something that will come off as an anion, but we have an electrophile. Now, an electrophile either has, it's either something that's got a full positive charge or a uh, very large partial positive charge. So you've got a full plus charge or a large partial positive charge is an electrophile. And we are going to substitute that onto the ring. For one of those hydrogens that are on the ring, I'm going to substitute one of the hydrogens with the electrophile and then as a byproduct, that hydrogen will go with whatever A here is. And we get some acid as a byproduct. But we have done a substitution onto the aromatic ring. Now let's take a look at the mechanism for how this works. And I'm going to stay generic and I'll also do specific examples and do the mechanism. So we said the electrophile, full plus charge or big partial positive. I'm going to show it as partial positive here, but it could be a full plus charge. So our first step of the mechanism is we're going to take a pair of electrons out of one of the double bonds of the aromatic ring, and it's going to be come and grab that electrophile, and I will kick the anion there off. So one of those two carbons gets the electrophile and one's going to be left with a plus charge because the initial tail becomes more positive by charge. Now we went from an aromatic ring to a non-aromatic ring. This step is going to be very slow. because we're going from a very stable compound to a much less stable compound. Now I want to get back to an aromatic ring. So we had kicked the electrons onto A here, so we have an anion. And to get back to the aromatic ring, well before we get back to it, let me just talk about what we have here. Even though this is less stable, non-aromatic, it is less stable than aromatic, it's not so bad because we do have a lot of resonance. That plus charge has resonance with the double bond. So you do have a lot of resonance to stabilize that plus charge. But still, it's not as stable as an aromatic ring. We'd like to get back to that aromatic ring. But again, it's not horrible. To get back to the aromatic ring, I need to grab the hydrogen off of the carbon where we just put the electrophile. If I can get rid of that hydrogen right there on the carbon where we put the electrophile, then we can get back to our aromatic ring. That anion is going to grab that hydrogen, so this is just an acid-base reaction, and then the electrons in that carbon-hydrogen bond, they're going to kick toward the plus charge and reform the double bond. 
and that gives us our product. We get our aromatic ring back. Let me just put the double bonds on there so we can see it. We get our aromatic ring back, and we get an acid here as a byproduct. Now, we're going to do several, I kept it generic here to start with, we're going to go through a lot of different electrophilic aromatic substitutions. Once we have the electrophile in hand, they will all work this exact same way. It's just getting to the electrophile is going to be the difference. So once we have the electrophile, they will always work the same. We're going to take a pair out of the benzene ring, add to the electrophile, and then we'll have something that pulls off the hydrogen on the, off the carbon where we just put the electrophile so that we get our aromatic ring back. That part is going to be the same on all of these reactions that we're going to be looking at. But getting to the electrophile is going to be a little bit different. Dr. Savage, what's the purpose of putting the electron on it? Does it make it more stable or like if you just need to use it in an experiment or something? Why does it want to react to yeah. start with? Uh, these electrophiles, especially if you can get a full plus charge, they're just so reactive that they, they're forcing the benzene to react, even though the benzene doesn't want to. There's no reason for the benzene to react. But it's just that we're using our electrophiles. Most of our, most of our electrophiles will have a full plus charge. Most of them are going to be a cation. And cations are not stable and they want to react with something. They're going to make that ring react whether it wants to or not. So there's not a real driving force, you know, for this to want to react. It's just we're making it react whether it wants to or not. Now the first electrophilic aromatic substitution that we're going to look at, we're going to look at halogenation of the benzene ring. If we take benzene and add a halogen, let's say chlorine, I'll add a chlorine molecule, we get no reaction. Nothing's going to happen because the benzene is just too stable. There's no way just adding chlorine can I get a chlorine atom onto that ring. However, if we take the benzene ring and chlorine and we throw in a Lewis acid catalyst, something like iron chloride or any Lewis acid catalyst, So any Lewis acid here will work, and it's just acting as a catalyst. So you, we can put in any Lewis acid. We will get substitution onto the ring. I'll get a chlorine on, and we get HCl here as a byproduct. So we are substituting one of the hydrogens of the, of the ring with a chlorine, now let's take a look at the mechanism. Lewis acid, if you recall, Lewis acid is, is an electron pair acceptor. Uh, we talked about that back in chapter three. A catalyst just speeds up the reaction. Catalyst is not consumed in the reaction. It just speeds it up. First part is a Lewis acid base reaction. That iron has got a very large partial positive charge. We've seen that with our Lewis acids in the past. I'll just draw it out. It's got three chlorines. The chlorines are all pulling electrons away from the iron. 
The iron only had six, and the six electrons has got the chlorines are pulling them away. So there's partial negative on all the chlorines. That leaves a monstrous partial positive on that iron. It needs some electrons. Where is it going to get some? Well, the chlorine molecule has got lots of electrons. So we're going to give a pair from the chlorine molecule to the iron. Now let's get our charges on using our arrow of the mechanism. Initial tail becomes more positive by charge, so that chlorine will have a full plus charge. Final head becomes more negative, so the iron has a full negative. That chlorine with full plus charge is not happy. Halogens want to be monovalent. They want only one bond and they're electronegative, so they don't like a plus charge. So that chlorine is really unhappy. This molecule is gonna break apart. We could break apart and go back to where we started, and that's a possibility. All acid-base reactions are reversible. But we could break it apart on the other side. So if I break this chlorine-iron bond, I go right back to where I start. But if I break the chlorine-chlorine bond, I'm going to take these electrons and go up to the plus charge. Always take electrons toward the plus charge. Then I get a chlorine cation. And now this chlorine here is back neutral. There was there was two lone pairs on there. Now there's three lone pairs. Now it's back neutral, the chlorine's back neutral, it's happy. But now the other chlorine is not happy. It's got a plus charge. It's got a full plus charge. This is my electrophile. This is what's gonna force the benzene to react. We're gonna take a pair of electrons. Let's get through this mechanism, then we'll call it a day. We're going to take a pair of electrons out of the benzene ring and add to that chlorine cation. Now our mechanism is the same as what I had up there for the generic. The only difference is getting to the electrophile. Once we have the electrophile in hand, the mechanism is the same all the way through. Let's so we one of these two carbons gets the chlorine, one of them is going to get a plus charge. Initial tail becomes more positive by charge, so one of them has a plus charge. I need to get rid of the hydrogen off of the carbon where I just put my electrophile, where I just put the chlorine. I need rid of that hydrogen. I also need my catalyst back. Right now I don't have my catalyst, the original one. We have this species. So I'm going to take a chlorine off of this it's going to come and get that hydrogen and those electrons kick toward the plus charge and reform the double bond so I get my aromatic ring back there's our product chlorine grab the hydrogen so we make HCl make an acid here as a byproduct and I get my catalyst back if it's a catalyst you should get it back at the end catalysts are not consumed in the reaction so we got all that back, but we have substituted on the ring a chlorine. Okay, we will look at some more of these tomorrow. We'll look at some other electrophilic aromatic substitutions. Please keep up with this. It's easy to get behind. So last class period we were looking at the halogenation of aromatic rings. We went through chlorine. Bromine works the same way. So I can take an aromatic ring react with a bromine molecule we will still need a Lewis acid catalyst we get no reaction if you don't have a Lewis acid in there
and we'll put some we'll put some heat to it. That will certainly help. Not required, but it helps. So again, I've got iron bromide this time. This is my Lewis acid catalyst. And we will brominate the ring. The mechanism is the same as what I did yesterday with the chlorine. We get HBr as a byproduct. I don't care about that. But we have halogenated the aromatic ring. Fluorine, we don't want to do fluorine. Fluorine is too reactive. We've talked about that in the past. Fluorine tends to get out of control and they explode and, and people lose fingers and hands and arms and everything else. So we don't want to do fluorine. It's too reactive. Iodine is too unreactive. So we stick with the chlorine and the bromine. That's the ones that are going to be used. Nobody's going to do iodine. It doesn't work very well. And fluorine, we don't want to do that. It's too reactive. We're going to look at putting several groups onto an aromatic ring, so several of these electrophilic aromatic substitutions. And the next one that we're going to look at is a nitration reaction. We're going to nitrate the aromatic ring. <laughs> Now those of you in the lab that's taking the lab, uh, we'll be doing this, this reaction in lab tomorrow. We're gonna, I'll first put up the reaction and then we'll go through the mechanism. We're gonna take a benzene ring. We're gonna add nitric acid and we're gonna add sulfuric acid. And this will put a nitro group, which is NO2, onto the ring. As, a, as byproducts, I'll just go ahead and show we get a hydronium. And we get HSO4 minus as byproducts. But we have nitrated the ring. We put an NO2 group onto the ring. Now let's take a look at our mechanism. the nitric acid and the sulfuric so we can see them. This is nitric acid. And here is sulfuric acid. Two are going to react. Anybody want to tell me what's going to happen? What do I always tell you when you got a strong, look for, when you see a strong acid, look for something to protonate. Now, I have two strong acids up there. Both of them cannot be the acid. One wins, one loses. Which one is the stronger acid? Sulfuric is the strongest. So, sulfuric being the stronger acid, it wins. 
is going to be the acid. So the nitric acid actually has to be the base. Like I said, they both cannot be the acid. The stronger one wins and the other one has to be the base. Now, whenever we have that strong acid, we're going to look for something protonate. Something's going to go get the proton off the acid. On the nitric acid, any of these three oxygens could go get the proton off of our acid. But if we use the OH, Now again, any of the three can do it, but if we use the OH to come and get the hydrogen off the acid, then that's going to give us a water molecule sitting there. We know water molecules are good leaving groups. And so part of the time that's going to happen. All acid-base reactions are reversible, so if one of the others get protonated, they'll come right back off eventually. But if we protonate the OH, I said we have a good leaving group there. We've got a water molecule. Water molecules are always good leaving groups. I'm going to take the negative charge on the oxygen. We're going to take water could leave off on its own, but it'd be nice if we have some help. So this oxygen is going to kick electrons in to form a double bond, and that pushes the water off. So we get a water molecule, and we've made this species. This is called a nitronium ion. This nitronium ion, this is our electrophile. This is the electrophile that's going to react with the aromatic green. You can see it's got a full plus charge. We said electrophiles have full positive charges or large partial positive charges. So now that we have the electrophile in hand, the mechanism is the same for all of these electrophilic aromatic substitutions. When, the, when we have the electrophile, they all react the same with the benzene green. It's just getting to the electrophile is the only difference in these mechanisms. So let's take our aromatic ring, our benzene, and the nitronium ion. And we're going to take a pair of electrons out of one of the double bonds of the aromatic ring. That's going to come and add to that nitrogen. Now that nitrogen already had eight electrons, so to avoid breaking the octet rule, we need to kick a pair onto one of the oxygens. So one of those two carbons of the benzene ring here from that double bond, one of these two gets the electrophile, the other one gets the plus charge. Now, we need to pull off, just like we did with the chlorine there yesterday, or, or the generic electrophilic aromatic substitution I went through, we need to get the hydrogen that's on the carbon where we just put our electrophile. That's the hydrogen we want, because if we get that hydrogen off, then we can get back to an aromatic ring. We went from aromatic to non-aromatic and so we want that aromatic ring back. The best base that we have in there is the water that left a moment ago. So that water is going to come and grab the proton and electrons kick toward the plus charge and reform that aromatic ring. We put the nitro group on. We got our aromatic ring back, and we have done a put a nitro group substituted a nitro group for one of the hydrogens. We get a hydronium here. We get our acid. 
all of these reactions use an acid as a catalyst and so we do get the acid back <laughs> we have nitrated the ring put a nitro group NO2 questions on the nitration okay let's look at another group putting on to the aromatic ring We're going to look at a sulfonation. So let's look at the reaction here to start with and then we'll go through the mechanism. We're going to take an aromatic ring. We're going to react with sulfur trioxide. This will be done in the presence of sulfuric acid. And we put a sulfonate group onto the aromatic ring. group drawn out. So this is another electrophilic aromatic substitution. Now the sulfur trioxide you don't have to actually add sulfur trioxide. <clears throat> you can use just sulfuric acid by itself. Sulfuric acid will make sulfur trioxide over time. If it's just sitting there, it will make sulfur trioxide. So we don't actually have to add the sulfur trioxide. If you have, if you buy, you can buy, you can buy sulfuric acid with sulfur trioxide in there. And when you buy it together, this is called fuming sulfuric acid. And you'll have, looks like smoke coming up off of it, it fumes. Um, that's called fuming sulfuric acid. So you can buy that and we can add that in. Or like I said, we can put just sulfuric acid. I don't have to have the sulfur trioxide. We can use just concentrated sulfuric acid. It, let me show you how the sulfuric acid, if you take two equivalents of sulfuric acid, this is in equilibrium. Sulfuric acid is in equilibrium with sulfur trioxide, a hydronium ion, and HSO4 minus. So, like I said, sulfur trioxide will make some, uh, I mean, sulfuric acid will make some of the sulfur trioxide. So we don't have to actually have that in there. We can use just concentrated sulfuric acid and we will get the same product. Doesn't hurt anything. It actually you know, helps to put it in there. It makes the reaction faster. We don't have to wait for the sulfuric to make the sulfur trioxide. So it's faster to add it in there. So let's look at our mechanism. And let me draw out the sulfur trioxide. There's the sulfur trioxide. There is a large partial positive charge on the sulfur. The sulfur trioxide is our electrophile. So 
but we don't have to go through and try to make the electrophile. We already have the electrophile in hand. So we're going to take a pair of electrons out of one of the double bonds of the aromatic ring. They're going to come out and add to the sulfur. Sulfur has got 12 electrons there around it. Sulfur can accommodate 12, but it can't have any more than that. So we're going to kick a pair out onto one of the oxygens. So we went from our aromatic to a non-aromatic. Again, even that non-aromatic, even though it's non-aromatic, it's not too bad because it does have resonance. Um, I think I forgot to tell you the name of it yesterday. It's called an arenium ion. Uh, it has resonance with the double bonds there. Not important, but it's called an arenium ion is the name of it. So it's not so unstable, but we it's not as stable as an aromatic. We'd like to get our aromatic ring back. We need to get the hydrogen off of the carbon where we just put our electrophile. We can use HSO4 minus that we have in there. Sulfuric will give some of the HSO4 minus. That's probably the best thing that we've got. I don't think this oxygen can reach over here and grab it. It's too far away. I wouldn't count it wrong if you want to use that one. I'm going to show it in two steps. So we get our aromatic green back. That sulfonate group needs to pick up a proton. So we just made the sulfuric acid. And then that can easily reach and get the proton off of the acid. So that gives us our sulfonate group. Onto the aromatic green. Don't forget that hydrogen with the sulfonate group. Nitro, the nitro group doesn't have a hydrogen on there. Sulfonate does. Okay, questions on the sulfonation. We can put a sulfonate group on. Still putting more groups on. going to look at a Frito Crafts alkylation. We're going to look at putting an alkyl group onto the aromatic green. Now as I've mentioned in the past, when you see people's name associated with a reaction, that's a very important reaction. Make certain that you know those. These Frito and Crafts, these two guys won a Nobel Prize for their work. So these are important reactions that we're going to be looking at. We're going to do one of these in lab on Monday. Let's look at a general reaction generic here to start with. We're going to take our aromatic green. We are going to take an alkyl halide. We're going to put in a Lewis acid catalyst and we will put an alkyl group onto that ring. We get an, uh, an acid as a byproduct, we get HX there, some acid as a byproduct depending on what the halide is, so HCl, HBr, something like that, but we have put an alkyl group 
onto the ring. Now any Lewis acid will work. Some of the most commonly used Lewis acids, I'll just review you in a moment. We covered a lot of Lewis acids in Organic One, but I'll review you for a moment. So some of these catalysts that could be used, aluminum chloride, aluminum bromide, iron chloride, iron bromide, um, titanium chloride, it has four chlorines, uh, BF3. Some of those, those are the, those there are the most commonly used uh, Lewis acids. Any of those will work. There, there's lots of others, but those are the most commonly used Lewis acids. Let's take a look at a specific example and we will go through the mechanism. Now the first step of our mechanism is that alkyl halide reacting with the catalyst. So the first step of our mechanism, we know that iron has a large partial positive charge. And we're going, the chlorine is on the alkyl halide is going to give a pair of electrons to that iron. So that's the first step of our mechanism. It is the same as what we did with the halogenation that we did yesterday. At the end of class yesterday, we reacted a chlorine molecule with the Lewis acid. If you follow your arrow, you could get your charges on. The initial tail becomes more positive by charge, so that chlorine will now have a full plus charge. Final head becomes more negative by charge. That iron has a full negative charge. Now, a chlorine with a plus charge, just like we had yesterday at the end of class, it's not happy. There's lots of things that's not making it happy. It's got a plus charge. It's an electronegative atom, and it's not like having a plus charge. It's got two bonds. Halogens want to be monovalent, and we've got it divalent, <clears throat> so it's not happy. It's going to break apart. We could break the chlorine iron bond that we just formed and go back to where we started, and all acid base reactions are reversible, so that could happen. Or we could break it apart on the other side. We could break the carbon chlorine bond, take those electrons onto the chlorine to get rid of that plus charge. So that chlorine is now neutral. The other piece that we have, we have a carbocation now. That carbocation that we have is our, our electrophile. That's what's going to react with the aromatic ring. So let's react it with our aromatic ring. Same, now the mechanism is the same as what we've been doing for all of these. We're gonna take a pair of electrons out of the double bond of, of one of these double bonds of the benzene ring, and we're gonna add that to the electrophile. It's gonna attack the carbon with the plus charge. So one of those two carbons of the double bond 
gets the electrophile and one gets a plus charge. We have made our arenium ion. Now we want to get back to the aromatic ring and I also need to get my catalyst back. It's not a catalyst if you don't get it back. So that anion that we had over there, it's going to come and grab the hydrogen on the carbon where we just put our electrophile. We always need to get rid of the hydrogen that's on the carbon where we just stuck our electrophile. I'm going to take a chlorine off, come and grab that hydrogen, and the electrons kick in to form the double bond. So we get our aromatic ring back. There is our product, and as a byproduct, chlorine grabbed the hydrogen, so we made HCl as a byproduct, and I also got my Lewis acid catalyst back. And we're finished. So we have put an alkyl group onto the aromatic ring. Questions on that? Let's look at another example. Reno-Crafts is an important reaction, so we'll do another example.